Welcome back. We're talking about ensuring peace in the Niger Delta. The Abuja Studios is busy today. We have with us uh, Odafe Oserada, who is a development strategist. Uh, thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. So what, is your, what were your thoughts when you heard that you know, the military was launching both an exercise and an operation tagged Operation Crocodile Smiles, when at the same time the federal government was looking to negotiate with the Niger Delta Avengers? What ran through your mind at that time? Well, mixed feelings. Uh, ordinarily, you would expect that no chief of army staff would go out there to carry out an operation or move troops without the approval of Mr. President. He's the president and commander-in-chief. In one breath, you had a supposed planning for negotiation, and in that breath, you have troops uh, down there in the Niger Delta uh, who were supposedly, to quote the chief of army staff, therefore an exercise, a military exercise, come operation. If it was an exercise, uh, okay, but when you have an operation, uh, and to quote the chief of army staff, he said, that if they come against any of these criminal elements, they should clear their doubts. We've gone past that era in, um, in military service. I mean, I was in The Hague when Ruto, the present vice president of Kenya, was at the ICC. What was he there for? For statements he made during the election and the consequences. Ruto, who is a very uh, smooth talker, great uh, oratorial prowess, when he got to the ICC, was quacking. So I think the uh, chief of army staff should help the president. It's possible what he was trying to do was make or allow the president or the federal government to bargain with uh, uh, militants from the point of strength. But uh, some of these things, we may understand it back home here in Nigeria, but when you go before international criminal courts, they will not take it in that context. When you make such statements, the troops, the soldier on ground, may see it as my, see, uh, my chief of staff says, chief of army staff says, if I see any uh, criminal, I should clear their doubts. Mm. There, are, there are two things that he said. I mean, there's a fact that he also said that there are clear rules of engagement. There are rules of engagement here, and that you also have a duty to protect the host communities. And so we do not expect to see that communities will come under attack from, you know, federal troops. But at the same time, if criminal elements, you know, decide that they want to be criminal, in spite of the fact that they know that an operation has been launched, what do you expect the military to now, do in that instance? The chief of army staff should have stopped as saying there are rules of engagement. That encompasses where there are challenges to the movement of the army. But when you now go to say, clear their doubts, the way the soldier will see it, the way the militants will see it, is to say, oh, oh, just yesterday... Are militants criminals? They, they are not criminals. They are not criminals in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the uh, chief of army staff took upon himself the duties of the court to declare uh, citizens of Niger Delta as criminals. Did he, did he say that? He didn't say that, did no, he? No, no. He, he, he said it, I, I watched it on, even on your own program, where he said clear the doubt of criminal elements. Mm -hmm. So when you say criminal elements and you are going for an exercise, who are the criminal elements in the Niger Delta? But I think we should uh, downplay this uh, for the image of our nation. That, that's, a, that's, a big, <laughs> that's, a, that's a critical question. Who are the criminal elements in the Niger Delta? Who, in your opinion, are the, will be there, the criminals? There are no criminal elements in the Niger Delta. Because what you have happening in the Niger Delta, it's a development planning challenge. And I'm not surprised that in the Niger Delta, there are development planning challenge, because even at the national level in Nigeria, you have the same problem. We had had a first uh, national development plan, a second, a third, a fourth national development plan, and how many years after independence? Look at where we are. We've had the indeed, we've had uh, needs, we've had all that. So I'm not surprised that if at national level we cannot plan that so by some magic, we'll be planning in Niger Delta. In Niger Delta, you had had uh, a case where uh, the 19th Street Constitution says give the region 50%. You'd had a case where you had the uh, Gumudia report, you had had the uh, uh, Pupola uh, committee, you had had a series of committee, you had had the Niger Delta uh, amnesty and all that. But the question we should ask ourselves is why are these things failing? And the critical issue is this the challenge we have is that as a nation, we do not plan. But Afe, you know, that point has been made, okay. but I think some people will take issue with the fact that you say there are no criminal elements in the Niger Delta. Well, uh, in the context of the operation, 
that the army is pushing in there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, tar everybody as criminal elements. If you meet criminal elements in the Niger Delta, who are the criminal elements? At this point in time, we should put all hands on deck to resolve the crisis in the region. But like I said, I think what the message the chief of was, uh, was trying, what he was trying to do was tell the uh, militants in Niger Delta, whom I don't see as criminal elements, but if they commit crime, of course, anybody that commits crime is a criminal element. But again, it is not in my mouth or in the mouth of the chief of army staff to declare anybody a criminal. So I think what he was trying to do, what he was trying to say, was to tell the militants, the federal government is not coming to negotiate with you because we are weak. We have the power, we have the capacity to carry out a military operation here. So negotiate well. So I think that is where he should leave it. There are rules of engagement, soldiers, officers, and, you know, imbibe by the rule of engagement. That would be fantastic. But I think we should play this down. Because uh, if we play this up, whatever we say here, the international community sees us, the national media sees us, these things will come back to haunt us. I wouldn't want to, I saw a Kenyan vice president at The Hague not able to talk. I wouldn't want my chief of army staff, who had done fantastically well uh, in the Northeast, who I think... Uh, God helping him, should be engaged by the UN in another operation, say things, words, 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 that may tomorrow make him a candidate for the ICC. I think that we'll go to Lagos now to take some questions from there. Duffy, I, I think we have to play something up here if you're talking about what shouldn't be played up or played down. I want to go back to what you just highlighted earlier on. Uh, you made a categorical statement by saying that there are no criminal elements in the Niger Delta, just uh, as if uh, there are no criminal elements anywhere in the world. How sure are you when you make such a categorical statement? Now, uh, I will see the militant elements in the Niger Delta as people fighting for what they perceive, wrongly or rightly, as their right, as a way of uh, pulling development to their region. Having said that, there are laws in the country. If in the course of a military operation, uh, you have, for instance, I mean, just yesterday, uh, we're told that uh, some people were arrested in the course of bunkering. Well, bunkering under our laws is a crime. Now, I agree with you, it will, be, uh, it will be a generalization to say that people don't commit crime in Niger Delta. That's not what I'm saying. But in the context of bringing everybody together, bringing peace to the table, we should be careful what we say at this period. There are a lot of things I can say. There are a lot of things they can say. But let's, bring, let's make it possible. Let's make it convenient. Let's make it uh, peaceable for us to have dialogue. Now, I think, in my opinion, I may be wrong again, that the statement by the chief of army staff was what prompted the bombing yesterday. At this point, let's, let's, let's hold back. Let's take some step back and say, look, uh, militants, we want to dialogue. We shouldn't say things that would make them angry. At the same time, the militants also should not do things that would uh, make the federal government also look stupid. So it's about making peace at this point. When you want to dialogue, you hold back some things. You don't say some things because you want peace. Let's talk about those words now. It would seem as if uh, some people are trying to cast some people into some other uh, is, uh, into a position. If you say uh, it is as a result of what uh, the chief of army staff has said that has resulted into what we saw yesterday, what exactly did he say that you feel is uh, something that can be very touchy to aggravate the issue in the Niger Delta? Incidentally, I watched the tape, uh, I watched the uh, his, uh, statement from your station here. When he said, if you find criminal elements, clear their doubts. What does that mean? What is wrong in Clear their doubts, it's, uh, yes, it's a Because, because, minister, because if you know, if you, time, uh, uh, at this point in time, Daffy, a moment here, Daffy, if you, you say, if you say these people are militants or people you want to call agitators, then they shouldn't take any offense when that word criminal, because they, they shouldn't be branded as criminals. If they feel that they are criminals, then they should act as such. 
But if they know they are not criminals, then they wouldn't have done what they did again. So are you now saying that those who are also militants or agitators, as some of uh, the Niger Delta people would want to call them, see them as criminals? But anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. That will be after now, uh, so that we'll get answers to, your, uh, to this question. I close the moments here with uh, Mr. Daffy, who is right there with uh, Mark Wayne, our studios in Abuja. Quick one here. First, we'll recall that history uh, will remind us how some people termed uh, the Boko Haram people as our children, and even those in the Niger Delta had the same thing. Now, you say these people are not criminals. Could you give us uh, a solution on how to solve this problem that we're having with the Niger Delta Avengers? Uh, I I think we should uh, go beyond solving the problem with Niger Delta Avengers. We had had different groups come up at different times, and uh, uh, we had the atomic, uh, I think, in terms of this world, and quite a number of them, and their face seems to have, you know, gone off, and you have new sets. So why don't we address the root cause of the problem? And I will prove a solution. Now, like I said, what the challenge we have is a development planning challenge, both at the regional level and at the national level. All you need to do is to draw up a physical development master plan, physical development master plan. That is what is missing in the Niger Delta. Your emphasis is on physical. On, my emphasis is on physical. Because... Because you, you, there has been a lot of reports, a lot of, uh, there's been uh, uh, findings on infrastructure for the Niger Delta, finding on uh, education for the Niger Delta, finding on health for the Niger Delta. But all of this, uh, development is multidimensional, but the dimension, the part of development that we are not taking good care of at regional level in Nigeria and at national level in Nigeria is that of a physical development master plan. Because there are conversations that there is actually a Niger Delta development master plan. The, it will shock Nigerians to hear this. The so-called Niger Delta development master plan does not have a physical development content. By that you mean? By that I mean, for instance, I live in Abuja. I've been in Abuja for quite some time now. I, uh, on, you know, if I click on, the, uh, on my laptop, I can find the Abuja master plan. I mean, if you go around offices in Abuja, you'll find the Abuja uh, development master plan. There's a plan for Abuja's development. And you have a phase one, phase two, phase three. And it, 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 it is, there's a hard copy of it. There is nothing like that for the, for the Niger Delta. Since all was discovered in Oibri till date, nothing like that. Quote me. Quote me on that. There is no physical development plan. All of the agitations for infrastructure, for education, for whatever, if it is situated within a physical development plan, then you can now measure development. And that is why all the uh, various Niger Delta plans, Niger Delta reports have failed. Because there's no, there's no way to measure development. And what some of us have done, because I also know the challenge the federal government would have. Now, at this point in time, how can you fund such a thing? And I'm telling the federal government that this thing can be funded without a cover. Where do you think that, that plan should be housed? In the Ministry of Niger Delta or at the NDDC? It, 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 any of the above okay. will, 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 will do just well. That will be a fine place to leave it. Thank you so much for coming on the program. We wish we had a little more time, Odafi, but we'll definitely get back to you uh, as we discuss the Niger Delta issue because it, it seems to be an ongoing one. Thank you for coming on the program. I've been discussing, or we have been discussing with Odafi Oster Rada, who is a development strategist. Uh, Sunrise Daily will uh, be rounding up at this moment. Back to you guys in Lagos. Well, yes, indeed, uh, we'll join the curtains today on the program. We appreciate everyone who sent a comment or question in. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain also. Many thanks. I'm Sliman uh, Lede. And I'm um, Maupe Ogun. Thank you.